Exercise and the brain. How does exercise impact learning in adolescents? It is no doubt that exercise has a multitude of impacts to physical health, but after my own experiences with exercise, I began to wonder, what are the mental and psychological effects of exercise? Many universities and research centers have conducted studies related to exercise and its effect on learning and memory. Among those, Dartmouth College Associate Professor David Bucci has conducted multiple investigations on the topic. According to the Dartmouth College research site, Bucci has discovered that the impact of exercise effectiveness is dependent on whether the person is an adolescence or an adulthood. By observing teenagers in a summer camp where they were exercising every day, he discovered that exercise in teenagers gives them an increased level of focus. In fact, it increased focus so much that even diagnosed ADHD adolescents found themselves able to concentrate better and not succumb to attention deficit symptoms. This is significant because not only do adolescents get to release nervous behavior by exercising, but it also helps them direct their attention more efficiently. Another researcher of importance to this topic is neuroscience professor Wendy Suzuki of New York University. According to CNN Health, she conducted an experiment with the aim of finding a distinguishable academic difference between two of her classes at NYU. One had an hour of lecture followed by an hour of aerobic exercise, and the other class was only the hour-long lecture. Her research found that those who study and then perform exercise immediately afterwards had improved memory, learning ability, and were able to complete tests faster than those who solely partake in the lecture. She has now applied these findings to an official course at NYU, where exercise is mandatory for the completion of the class. At Georgia Health Sciences University, another study was conducted with the aim of finding the effect of exercise on students. It took a group of clinically overweight 11 to 17 year olds where they performed 20 to 40 minutes of strenuous activity every day over a period of three months. These activities included jump rope, running games, and hula hooping. With the use of fMRI scans to monitor changes in the brain, it was discovered that the prefrontal cortex of all the students displayed enhanced brain activity. Consequently, every student demonstrated exceptional development in mathematic ability and, as a whole, had an average increase of 3.8 on IQ tests. In my own life, exercise and sports have played a huge role. I have participated in sports consistently since 7th grade when I did swimming, soccer, and track, but have since switched to playing volleyball and basketball for all four years of high school. I have found the exercise and sports to help me maintain both my physical health but also help me manage my time better and focus more in school. Also, combined with my regular exercise, sports practice gave me more workout time and therefore more time to release any stress or anxiety I felt from schoolwork. I have found on the off seasons when I don't participate in sports, I have a harder time remembering things, focusing, and getting work done both in school and outside of school, which have in some cases taken effect in my grades. My level of concentration is not as high and I tend to be less productive when not in the routine exercise schedule. I now make time to ensure that I'm getting some exercise. And with the convenience of school classes like resistance training and group fitness, I am always able to maintain a constant routine. This experience is not uncommon. Many of our own athletes are not coincidentally on an academic degree of honor roll. More often than not, the majority of those who participate in sports tend to succeed academically. To focus on the biological perspective of the effect of exercise on the brain, the published exercise science writer Gretchen Reynolds of the New York Times draws the comparison between brain cells and muscle cells. The main similarity between the two cells is in the mitochondria production and strengthening, mitochondria being the organelle that generates energy. She connects the production of physical power output with mental power output, explaining that brain cells with increased levels of mitochondria could reduce both mental and physical fatigue. Exercising increases mitochondrial growth and therefore helps delay mental fatigue, resulting in the aforementioned increase in focus. This could also present the onset of neurological disease such as Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. In terms of cognition development within the realm of exercise, sports are a good example of how cognition improves. Cognition aspects such as learning, problem solving, memory, attention, perception, and decision making are all trained in the practice of sports. In a sports setting, we are made to perceive a situation and think quickly and correctly. Therefore, our problem solving and decision making abilities become more defined the longer you play. This improvement translates not only to the class, but all elements of everyday life. The sociocultural aspect of the effect of exercise could potentially be quite large in scale if regular exercise was a mandatory implementation in the lives of adolescents. Exercise increases focus and discipline in teenagers. 
leading to a lower crime rate, more competent workforce, and less health risks, which in turn can decrease healthcare costs for everyone. For the use and value of animals in behavioral research, the University of Illinois conducted research using mice to test their brain functions in response to different environments. Their aim was to evaluate the general benefits of exercise in relation to cognitive ability. According to the New York Times, the study tested groups of mice in four different environments. The first group had an abundance of exotic food, the second group had an engaging environment with food and a running wheel, the third had just a running wheel and normal food, and the last group had no running wheel and normal food. It was found that the difference in cognitive function did not lie in food or an engaging environment, but whether or not the environment had a running wheel, a form of exercise. The study concluded that the brain-derived neurotropic factor, also known as BDNF, which strengthens and fortifies synaptic connection and neurogenesis, was found on higher levels in both mice and humans who exercise frequently. It also showed that those mice that exercise had double the amount of new neurons in their hippocampi than those mice that didn't run. This test explains how exercise can help reduce physical brain shrinkage and improve cognitive adaptability. The mice in this test were ethically treated since all brain observations were done through brain scans. In conclusion, exercise positively impacts learning in adolescence. From enhancing neurogenesis to increasing focus, discipline, and memory ability, from improving cognition aspects to escalating mitochondrial growth, exercise is the best and easiest way to aid teenagers in the learning process. With all the numerous benefits, both psychologically and physically, why wouldn't you exercise?